Well, he's not a big one, but he's a starter. And welcome back, folks, to a, another video with Fly Fishing with Jeff. And first week of June on my little lake. Man, is it beautiful. Bring this guy on in here. We're looking for something much bigger than that. Like I said, it's a starter. And it's uh, absolutely perfect morning. It's 48, 49 degrees. I'm here in the float tube, of course. Got a couple rods with me here. This is an eight weight floating line. Big pucker lip fly making some noise around these pads. Wow, what a beautiful morning. If you're asking, why haven't I seen him out on the river? Well, we have had one of the wettest Mays and uh, been busy, but more importantly, the water's just way up. And uh, it's about as high as I've seen it in several years right now. Rain's been good. Good for the fire concerns that we have. But <clears throat> way up. That's why we're out on the lake today. Trying a little top water right off the bat here this morning. So anyway, that's what we're doing. I'm going to work around the lake a little bit. Some good fish in here. Hopefully we can find something to respond. Love being out here early in the morning. Nothing else, nobody else, just the loons and birds. So come along and let's see what we can find today. And just enjoy the creation that God gave us out here. <laughs> well, there was a good one. Oh, come on. Jeff, get a hold of yourself. Huh? Still haven't caught up with him. <laughs> I'm glad he hooked himself well. Oh, not a big one at all. All right, just made a big thump. Well, that was fun. Either way, <clears throat> like I said, I know there's some big fish in here. This is like I showed you last year, one of my big pucker lip flies that I make. Work well for large mouth, very well for small mouth. Make a lot of water, a lot of noise on the water. So that's what. Just getting ready. To, oh, lost him. That's too bad. Sun's just getting ready to come up over the horizon there. Fish are starting to pop a little bit. Just 
need to find a big one. There we go. Come here. You got a mouthful of fly, don't you? Sure do. Ooh, easy. Let me see, easy. been big so far but man a lot of fun See one right under it. There he goes. Yeah, I saw him bubble up. Nervous, nervous water there. Goodness, where's all the big guys at? Where are all the big guys at? see him coming. It's kind of cool. Come here, man. Let's see what you are. Now I'm looking for your grandpa. Looking for your grandpa. Start the big fish this morning. 
Look at that, how beautiful that is. Sun shining on it. Mm, that feels good. A little chilly in the water. That sun sure feels good, folks. Mm. That's a Alright, so yeah, that's a good one to end on right here at the takeout. Yeah, no good fish, but or no big fish, but it's good to be out. So very glad you could come along and enjoy this beautiful northwestern lake with me this morning Let's try one more cast right back in there. And that's a wrap. Those are loons taking off across the lake. One, two, and I think a chick, younger loon. Saw three of them come by. Pretty cool. Welcome back folks to the front porch and um, hope you enjoyed the video. It was very simple, beautiful morning. I uh, wish I'd caught more and a big bass that are there. I know that'll happen in time. But um, first of all, I want to do a couple of shout outs to a couple of guys that uh, I communicate with a little bit, quite a bit sometimes. First is uh, my friend Keith. Keith McNutt from down in Arkansas. Haven't ever met Keith, but we we email and communicate, and um, he's I can tell he's a fine guy, and he's quite a fly fisherman and really a good fly tire. So Keith, um, always good to hear from you. And um, second is a <coughs> ex-retired, old retired coach from Indiana, Mike Leonard. Um, been doing some fly fishing. Finally got a life after he quit coaching football um, there at Franklin College. He's quite was quite the coach, and if you've ever been a coach and a teacher, you know how time consuming that is. So, just wanted to say hey to both you guys, and um, 
my congratulations on the retirement and having a chance to string up a few fish on your fly rod and float tube. That's a great deal. So I thought I'd talk to you tonight real quickly about raising sons. I know that sounds like a crazy thing to talk about, but um, I have two sons, both good, good men, uh, not boys anymore. Harrison's the oldest and Jonas is the youngest and um, just thought I'd spend a minute because I, you know this is my my little uh, soapbox to throw out what I think is wrong but I really believe we have lost that connection of raising and having fathers in our homes um, I'm not sure what I would have turned out had I not had Ivan Carmichael um, crack my head and worse several times and uh, keep me on the straight and narrow. Um, Want to go to a verse here real quick. Got to go to the glasses like Tony, Tony Kornheiser. Proverbs 22.6, <clears throat> one of my favorites, says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I've thought about that a lot, you know. You raise a kid, you do the best you can, and that's what you—that's what we do as parents. But it's really not about what we give to them. Um, it's not about money, it's not about cars, it's about our time. And I think that's what's missing quite a, quite a bit with today's youth. They just don't have that commitment from their fathers. And, um, you know, being a teacher, I wasn't the wealthiest, didn't have all the money in the world, um, and I certainly didn't do it all right, that's for sure. Both my boys would attest to that. But I was able to uh, do a lot with them, a lot of fishing, a lot of hunting, a lot of camping, a lot of hiking, um, all those kinds of things. That makes a difference. And both of mine I'm very proud of, and they both you know, turned out to be good adults. Um, often, you know, you go through a period where things are just a little bit rough, and um, that's what this verse is about. You do the best you can, and most often, that child will return to that good upbringing. And um, I know that's what happened with me. Uh, I'm sure it's happened with a lot of my friends, and uh, you may have experienced the very same thing. Um, but having that strong father figure at home, in the house, I was often asked, why don't I do this, why, don't, why didn't I do that? Well, you know, to be quite honest, I knew it wasn't the right thing, but had a little bit of a fear factor going on there with what might happen because uh, my father was pretty stern and strict, and I'm glad he was. And I think our spiritual father is as well, and I think he expects, he expects our best. Are we perfect? For sure we're not. We are flawed individuals. But we are able to go out, go forth each day and do the very best we can. And sometimes we stray from that. Sometimes we don't do quite what is right and then we return to it because that's how we were trained. So anyway, if you got any thoughts on that, you can leave it in the comment section. And um, just thought I'd pass along how much joy I've had myself out of raising two sons. If you're at that stage, <coughs> and you're raising sons, it's not always fun, it's work. So, you know what? Just keep on pushing. And uh, somewhere down the line, it's all gonna pay off and you'll have nice men and you'll have a relationship and um, that's a great thing. So, anyway, thanks for coming along today and I'll see you again on the water in the future.